Well, good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad that every one of you has found your way to be in worship with us, whether you are here in person or whether you're joining online later this week. Uh, we're so glad that you are here. I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes it's just good to be in worship, right? This morning I sat up there in the balcony uh, and was doing some work and listening to our beautiful musicians and just had chills running down my spine because it's such a beautiful gift to be here in church and to be in worship together. Um, and so I'm so glad that each one of you is here and I pray today that you would, um, that you would find the presence of God in the ways in which you need it the most. Um, I know we each have our own needs, uh, and so I pray today that you might feel connected to God in a special way. I would like to draw your attention to a couple of announcements uh, on the back of your bulletin. Uh, also, inside your bulletin, you will find a Connect card. I ask that you just fill that out, connect it, put it in the offering plate later in the service. Uh, that's a way that we can stay connected. You can give any prayer request, and I will be lifting those in prayer for you each week. Uh, this is a great way for us to be connected together. Um, so this week uh, is an exciting week. Can you believe it's already October? Not only is it October, it's October 10th, right? So we're like, we're like into October, right? Um, so if anybody's like me, my friend Ryan is here today. He knows that I like some pumpkin spice coffee. I got some pumpkin creamer at my house. We're going to have a pumpkin patch here at St. John's. The pumpkins are going to be delivered this Friday. Uh, at 4 p.m. So if anyone is willing and able to help at 4 p.m. this Friday, we need lots and lots of help um, to get those pumpkins off the truck onto our front lawn. Um, and so if you're willing and able, I might even provide you some dinner at my house afterwards. Um, and so <laughs> if I can entice you in any way, please let me know. I would love to have you help us. Uh, and then our pumpkin patch will officially open on Saturday, October 16th. Uh, and it will run from 12 to 7 every day up through Halloween. And so we invite you, tell your friends that we have a pumpkin patch. Uh, come and buy your pumpkin. Um, that is just such a great gift for us to be in community with the neighborhood around us. Uh, as the pastor here, I thought this is worth it. It's a lot of work, but I really hope that this gives us an opportunity to engage the neighborhood and the people living in this area in a special way. So if you would like to volunteer for the pumpkin patch, we do need people to help work it uh, every day. And so I would love if anybody has some extra time uh, to give a couple hours a week or something to come and sit with me or somebody else at the table, sell pumpkins, that would be great. You can um, find the link to sign up in your email. If you do not get our emails, let me know. I need to add you to our weekly email list. Um, there is a link there that's a digital sign up where you can log in uh, to to sign up for some shifts for that. Next Sunday is a special Sunday and we will be having a healing service here uh, in place of our normal worship service. Uh, it'll be at the same time, 11 a.m., but we will be joined by members of First United Methodist Church downtown. Uh, and this healing service, Gerard, uh, the music director downtown, put together a couple years ago. Um, and it has been a very special thing, and it was inspired by a healing service at Temple Judea. Uh, and so Gerard was a, has been a big part of healing services at Temple Judea, and I even got to attend those before Gerard created his. And it is such a a powerful gift. Um, whatever you are going through in life, I promise this service has something to offer. And so we are so excited that this next Sunday, our music team is going to be joining the music team from First Church, and they will be leading us through the service of healing. There will be a lot of music, um, a lot of just inspirational readings and poetry and things that can just offer a balm for our soul. Um, and so we hope that you will join us um, if you are able to be there. It will, you will not want to miss it. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can put that up tomorrow. 
Um, and last but not least, there's many other announcements, but another one I want to draw your attention to is that we are having a fall festival um, on October 29th here in our parking lot. So many of you have been a part of this fall festival in years past, uh, and as I have worked with the school over the last couple of months, we've been dreaming about what is something we can offer to our community. Um, and so we figured a fall festival is a great way, again, to get to know the people in our community uh, and to invite our, our kids, our families, our friends to come and just have a fun night. Um, there's going to be some mechanical rides. I'm really excited about that. I've never heard of mechanical rides at a church fall festival, but they are here. Um, there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be some uh, inflatables. Uh, there's an inflatable obstacle course. Anybody want to challenge me on that? Um, <laughs> Jenny, Jenny and I are going to have a competition. Um, so that's on October 29th. That's a Friday from 4 to 8 p.m. Um, I do need a few volunteers, so please let me know if you're willing to help volunteer for that. Um, but please also share the word. Spread the word to people you know. I think it'll be a special event um, for all who uh, come out to participate. So a lot going on here um, at St. John's. Uh, it might be a, it might seem that not a lot is going on when we're not in worship in this sanctuary every week, but there's a lot going on behind the surface. Um, and so I hope and pray that each one of you will take time to get engaged, uh, to be a part of this faith community, whether that's through small groups, whether that's through coming to work the pumpkin patch, the fall festival, whatever it is, we would love to have you be a part of this community and a deep and meaningful way. As we prepare our hearts for worship, let us center ourselves in a moment of silence. Let us prepare our hearts to encounter the divine presence among us. Lord, Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and join me in our call to worship. Lord, today we draw near to the fount of your love. We all carry so much on our hearts and minds. We are anxious and fearful for what lies ahead. We still want to have control over our lives. Lord, despite the discomfort and the unknown, though we may be weary and tired, amen. Let us remain standing and affirm who we are as a community of, here at St. John's. St. John's on the Lake is a reconciling congregation that affirms the sacred worth of all people. All are welcome to fully participate in the life of our church and ministries. Each of us as we grow with God and in our faith. Whatever your race, ethnicity, economic situation, gender or sexual orientation, background or God-given abilities, you are welcome here. God calls us to acts of love, grace, and advocacy, together here and out in the world. We hope to be a sanctuary and a place without barriers for all of God's creation. Amen. Let us continue in our service of worship as we sing our opening hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
Amen. You all may be seated. Each time we gather in worship, you know the drill. We have the opportunity to share our joys and concerns with one another, to be in prayer with each other through this journey called life. And so this morning, I invite any of you to lift up any concerns or joys uh, that you would like to share. We will continue praying for Lori, who lost her sister um, not too long ago. And so we pray for you, and we're holding you and your whole family. So thank you for being here, Lori. Let's pray. Yes. Bill Fuhr is a member of our church who had a lung transplant uh, a couple of maybe two months ago at this point, um, and has continued to have some complications and has been in and out of the hospital a couple times. Um, he seems to be in good spirits, um, but he is having, you know, some long journeys with this um, transplant. And so let's continue to hold him in our prayers as well. Wow. So Ryan's friend Heather had a liver transplant and a kidney, liver and kidney transplant, and is doing well. We praise God for that. I praise God for being back in this space this morning. Last week, uh, some of you joined us over at First Church, but it's always good to be home, right? Uh, and it's good to be back with Jenny, uh, who was out last week, and we're so glad you're back. Um, and we are happy all of you are here. Um, and it's truly such a gift, and I give God thanks for you all today, particularly. I'm sure there are many other joys and many other concerns, the things that consume our minds, our hearts, and trust that God is here with us. And God wants to hear those prayers. So let us bring ourselves into a posture of prayer, lifting all of these things to God. Let us pray. Great and mighty God, we come to you this day seeking your presence, seeking your strength, your comfort. Lord, for we know we carry so much in this life, but Lord, we know that this space is our refuge, that you are our rock and our redeemer our sustainer. So Lord, we come and ask you to fulfill and sustain us. Lord, we are all weary and exhausted for one reason or another, maybe physically or mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Wherever we are, you know our needs. And we ask that your spirit might come and surround us that it might touch us in a special way, that you might move us into newness, move us into meaningful ways. Lord, that we might be your hands and feet in the world, offering that same comfort 
and love to those around us. Lord, the needs in this world, the needs in our community are so great. And we ask that this church might be a beacon of hope and solace for so many. Lord, mold us and shape us and use us to be your light in this world. Help us to be your hands and feet, to be your disciples. As we pray together how Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And good morning to all of you. It's so good to see you here. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, 17 through 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man came up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give your money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have all left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you, Carol Ann. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for your word this day. Might you open it, might it speak to our hearts and minds, and might you use the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts to stir us into doing your work in the world. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. Well, how many of you are ocean lovers? How many of you love the ocean? We live in Miami, we're very close, so if you don't, I feel very sorry for you. Um, I love the ocean, I always have. I don't know about you, but there's like this majestic feeling anytime I'm near the water. And when I'm near the water, there's something spiritual that takes place. I feel connected to God in this grandiose place. And one of my favorite things to do recently since I've moved over to Miami Beach is going out onto the beach around sunset and soaking in the vastness of the ocean, listening to the sound of the waves and feeling the gentle and yet constant breeze. And a few months ago, one of my all-time, well, my all-time favorite band called Need to Breathe um, released a song called Into the Mystery. And the song is about, they wrote it during COVID, during lockdown and quarantine, and it's about the, the craziness and the chaos of life and the mystery of life and their journey of kind of walking into that mystery and trusting God in the unknown. And so recently, my favorite thing has been to, listening, to listen to that song while looking out at the ocean, the mysterious ocean, right? Just like the song talks about the mystery of life, I feel like there's a profound mystery in something like the ocean. The ocean can be so calming yet it can be so powerful. The ocean is tangible. We can go out right over there and touch the ocean. And yet, it's so large, it spans across 70% of the earth. It's right in front of you. And yet, it's still unimaginable, right? This is where I have been finding God lately, in the mystery, in the unknown. There is so much we know about God, and yet there's still so much more that we do not know, right? And I believe this is where our faith comes in. This morning we heard Carol Ann read a passage from the Gospel of Mark that talks about this rich man who, one, does not have a name, this anonymous person, comes to Jesus asking, how can I be sure of my salvation? So Jesus responds to him, well, you know the commandments, right? Then follow them. And so this unknown man says, of course I know the commandments. I've been following them my whole life. And Jesus responds to him and says, well, it seems that you're just missing one thing. You haven't quite trusted me. Give up your things. Sell it all. Give everything you have to the poor and follow me. This is Jesus' response. Sounds a bit radical, right? <laughs> if Jesus came to you and said, sell everything you own, give it away, and follow me. I think this story can be a bit unsettling for that very reason. But more important, I think this story, this passage, hints at the ways in which we all have trouble trusting God. This man 
had been following God his entire life. The scripture says, right? He's been following God, following the commandments his whole life. And yet, he still had not learned to trust God, right? I don't know how many of you might feel the same way. How many of us have been following God our whole lives and still struggle to trust? So Jesus calls this man out. From what we know, we know this guy is very wealthy, right? He has many possessions, says the text. And at this time, in this time frame, someone who had many possessions, that is a sign of wealth, right? Today, some people might just be hoarders if they have a lot of possessions. They might not be wealthy. Uh, they might just be hoarders. But in this time frame, someone who had a lot of possessions was wealthy. We don't know this man's age, but you can assume that this person is an adult because if someone who has this much stuff has either inherited a lot or they have made a lot or both, right? Regardless, it's clear that this man is very affluent. But it's also very clear that he is a follower of God. He believes in God. He's been walking with God his whole life. And here, after Jesus instructs him to give it all up, his response is what? Shock and grief, sadness, Right? It says that he walked away grieving. You see, Jesus asked him to do something a little uncomfortable. Jesus asked him to trust in the unknown. For this man, it's clear that wealth and luxury are all he has ever known. And yet Jesus beckons him to trust him, to do something unfamiliar. Essentially, Jesus says to him, you've got to trust me. You've got to learn to trust me. I know what I'm doing. And you cannot be con in control of everything. Let it go. Giving up things that we hold close can be difficult, right? Giving up a life, the only life that we've ever known, is really scary. It's difficult. It's intimidating. And yet, this is Jesus' message. We can follow our God, we can follow God our whole lives and still lack a genuine trust of God. Jesus calls this man into a life of mystery and unknown, unfamiliar territory. And I believe Jesus calls us to do the same to some degree. The story makes it very clear that material things, or things in general, can become a crutch to our faith. They give us a false sense of control. They give us a false sense of security in the chaos of life. And yeah, sometimes material possessions can ease our minds, right? It, it can ease our stress. But at the same time, those things keep our faith more distant, right? Material things can make us too comfortable to where we trust in ourselves more than we trust in God's ability to provide. That's the punch to the gut that the scripture offers us this morning. When I was a freshman in college, I felt God calling me to do something rather uncomfortable. My whole time in high school and youth group, we took these mission trips around the country every summer. 
and I had loved it. I had, that's actually where I experienced my first call to ministry was on these mission trips. And here, my second semester of freshman year of college, I feel God calling me to then go and lead these mission trips. I was like, hmm, I don't know about that. But Team Effort, the name of this organization, just kept coming to my mind. And it weighed heavily on my heart, and I couldn't shake it. You ever have something you can't stop thinking about, and it's like, maybe God's trying to tell me something? It was one of those moments. I said, okay, God, I guess I'm listening. What does this have to do with me? What do you want me to do? And so I prayed, and I listened for what God might be saying. And it only became more and more prevalent as time went on that this wasn't going away, that this was a calling God was putting before me. God wanted me to go and work for Team Effort this summer. And so, you know, you can never win with God. So I, I let God win. <laughs> I gave over the reins, said, okay, I'll submit an application to work for this organization. And they accepted it. They hired me. And I got a little bit excited. It's like, oh, yeah, a new adventure. But then the more I started thinking about it, I said, oh, crap. What have I just done? Because working for Team Effort for a summer entailed something else that was uncomfortable. Many of you know that I was spoiled growing up. My family had a lake house, and I was privileged to be able to spend the summers at our family's lake house, and it was my favorite place in the world to be. I looked forward to it all year long, to be at the lake. And yet, working for Team Effort for a summer, doing mission work for a summer, meant giving that up, giving up that luxury. And if I'm being 100% honest, at that time in my life, it felt like one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. It seems a bit trivial now, looking back, but in the moment, it's something that you deeply hold close. And it was really hard to let go of that. It meant giving up my favorite place. It meant giving up quality time with my family at the lake. It meant giving up the opportunity to invite my friends to the lake for the 4th of July. It meant giving up everything I knew summer to be. It meant doing something unfamiliar. It meant trusting in God for a summer of unknown. God called me mysteriously, into this place. God asked me to trust that I would be taken care of, even though things would look different, that I would be okay. And so, I went and I spent 12 weeks as a missionary in Brunswick, Georgia. Anybody been to Brunswick, Georgia? It is hot and muggy and stinky. They call it the dirty wick for a reason. There is a paper plant. It does not smell good. And I spent my whole summer there. And the whole summer I spent living in an eight foot wide by 30 foot long trailer with four other people. A little uncomfortable. And I spent six days of my week out in the South Georgia heat, re-roofing houses with high schoolers for a whole summer. And any of my free time I spent preparing for a sermon, preparing for a Bible study that I would be leading that week. And then we would wake up after only five or six hours of sleep just to have to do it again. Not to mention the numerous and countless pranks that the high schoolers would play on us every week. But I gave, I gave up 
being comfortable for that summer. It was a very hard decision. And yet amidst the fear and the dread of giving up what I knew, I have to tell you that summer was the, one of the most absolutely incredible experiences of my entire life. Giving up something that I thought was the most beautiful thing in my life allowed me to experience something even more incredible. That summer I grew to trust in God in ways I never thought possible. My heart was transformed in a way that I would never want to go back, right? I never want to go back to that pre-team effort, KIPP. My understanding of the world changed. My understanding of material possessions changed. I forgot to mention that where I was stationed was on the campus of a school for special needs children. Not just special needs children, but special needs foster children. These kids had been in at least seven different foster homes before they ended up at this school. And this school was a refuge for them. And we spent our time with these kids playing games. And it changes you. But it meant giving up something that I knew in order to experience something beautifully different, right? My sense of purpose came to light that summer. Spending three months in an unknown, unfamiliar place was actually laying a foundation for what would eventually lead me to go to seminary and become a pastor, right? I didn't know it at the time, but that's what was happening. And yet, had I not found the courage to take a leap of faith, to do something different, I very well might not be standing in front of you today. I probably wouldn't have gone to seminary. I probably wouldn't be a pastor. Letting go, letting go that summer is arguably one of the biggest decisions I've ever made. That was the summer I knew that faith was not about just going through the motions, that faith was something I had to live out. You see, the Christian faith I think we often think of going through the motions. I go to church, I read my Bible, I pray, I do all the right things. But faith is so much more. Faith is about giving up control and about following God in the unknown territory of life. It's about submitting ourselves to the call of Jesus to serve others, to love our neighbors, to care for the needy. It's about putting the needs of others before the comfort of ourself. And trust that as we do those hard things, that God can and will provide that is what faith is about. Today I'm curious where God might be calling you to give up, what God might be calling you to give up. Think about what is hindering you from trusting God more fully. What are the forms of control you need to hand over? Maybe God's asking you to give up some of the not-so-necessary items in life so that you can help someone a little less fortunate. Maybe God's calling you to do something or go somewhere that's unfamiliar or uncomfortable. 
Maybe God's just asking you to lean into the mystery a little more. What might, be God, what might God be calling us as a church to give up? What is hindering us as a community from trusting God? How can we be more serious about following Jesus and not just going through the motions? Where do we need to hand over the reins? Maybe God is calling us to give up a little bit of comfort, a little bit of luxury to help those in need around our city. Maybe God's calling us to give up what we know church to be so that we might be transformed from the inside out. Maybe God is calling us to do things differently than we've always done them. I've been inspired by quite a few of my friends recently that have taken leaps of faith into the unknown. They've done things that are quite frightening, and yet they found such reward. I've had friends completely give up everything they know life to be in order to discover a new one. I've had friends move to a different city just to follow the tug on their heart to do something different. I've had friends leave a comfortable job in order to do something more meaningful. And I've had friends make some real big sacrifices to help the people around them. The truth is giving up isn't easy, but it can be oh so rewarding. In the text that Carol Ann read, it's, Jesus says, there is no one who gives up these things who will not receive a hundredfold in return. Whatever God might be calling you to give up will be difficult, but know that God is actively working to provide as we, work, as we do that hard work. Yeah, our lives will look different. The journey will seem scary, but I can assure you the temporary discomfort is worth the eternal transformation. The vast horizon before us is calling out to us. We're called to take this leap of faith into something unknown and learn to trust God through it all. Friends, might we find the courage to take that step? And might our relationship with God be completely transformed? Let's give it up and let's see what God can do in our midst. Amen. offering plate will be going around and I encourage you to give as God is leading your heart and trust that God can do mighty things with whatever we can offer. Let us give our gifts to God.
Let us stand and sing our doxology, giving God thanks for these gifts. Let us continue in worship as we sing our closing hymn, The Summons. <laughs> the spirit is blowing in our midst. <laughs> Today, God is calling us into the unknown parts of life. Imagine looking out onto a horizon with the sunset behind you, not knowing what the future will hold, but trusting whatever is beyond that horizon is beautiful, it's profound, and meaningful. The scripture we heard today, it says, while we might think it is impossible. With God, everything is possible, right? So might we have the courage to take that leap of faith into the mystery and trust that God is doing some mighty things in our midst. Might we each have the courage to go where God is leading us. Go in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit this day. Amen. Amen.